Let me show you how to make a sign like this without owning any of our software, and it can be cut on almost any CNC. Over the past few years, the price of a good quality CNC has dropped tremendously. There's one out there for almost every budget. So what is a CNC? Well, you can imagine taking a trim router like this and being able to accurately move it front to back, left to right, up and down with 100% repeatability. Well, that's what a CNC allows you to do. This one back here has a trim router mounted on it. The gantry can move left to right, that's the x-axis. Front to back, that's the y-axis, and up and down, that's the z-axis. By inserting specialized tools into the trim router, we can use those to actually cut a project. This bit here happens to be an end mill, and the end of it is flat on the bottom, and we can use this to go ahead and remove a lot of material really quickly. And we also use it for cutout passes to cut projects out of your stock. This is a ball nose end mill, so instead of having a flat end, it has a rounded end, and this is perfect for adding nice smooth curves or details to 3D models. And this is a V-bit, and its geometry allows you to actually cut nice formed V-bit text and add details to your project. Okay, so where does Vectric fit into this puzzle? Well, we create easy to use software that you can create a project in, output toolpath to tell your CNC how to move and what to cut. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you really quickly how easy our software is to use and show you how to make that sign that we saw a bit earlier. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, then you can download our free trial version at no cost to you, and you can do all the steps that I'm gonna show you right now. And if in the end you wanna cut the project, you can just use the toolpaths that I've created in the trial-friendly version of this project. Now let me show you quickly how to download the trial version of our software. So let's go over to vetric.com, and we're gonna click on free trial, and we're gonna download the free trial of vCarve Desktop. As soon as you click on that, You'll be directed over to our downloads page. You can go ahead and now download the trial version and we're just going to ask you for a little bit of information and once you have your software downloaded installed you get access to all kinds of other trial friendly free projects that you can cut on your CNC. Once you have that downloaded then you can navigate over to our free trial projects or you'll see there's all kinds of extra free trial projects here to make. And look for the one that we're gonna to create today called Back Garden Grill Sign. Now once you have that downloaded and installed, we can go ahead and you can follow along with me. So for this project, we're gonna use this pre-prepped piece of material. It's black MDF that we painted the face of it white. That way when we cut away any of the the surface, then we're going to reveal the black MDF behind, which is going to save us lots of time on finishing. Now that you've downloaded and installed the project file, what you're going to find is a folder called Logos. We're going to go ahead and open that up. And in here you're going to find a website page called home.html. And we can just double click on that. And what that'll do is it'll open up your browser and it will show you some logos. Now let's just pretend that you were surfing the internet and you found this page and you wanted to use one of these logos as a basis of your project. All you need to do is hover over it, right click on it, and say copy image. And that's been copied to your clipboard. We can go ahead and minimize our browser and bring up our vCard desktop software. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. This is simply a single-sided job that we're going to add in the measurements of our piece of material for our job size. In this case, it's gonna be 300 millimeters by 200 millimeters and nine millimeters thick. Now we're gonna tell our software that we are gonna go ahead and zero off the material surface, so the top of our material. We're gonna choose our start position, and for right now, we're gonna set that to the center of our job. We'll change that later on. The resolution doesn't matter, but we're going to take a look at our material settings. Now this won't tell our software actually what kind of material we're cutting into. It's just going to adjust the preview of our 3D toolpaths so that it looks like it's being cut in our material when we take a look at the test tooling. So let's go ahead and change that to be a solid color. And we're going to change that to be white. Then we can just click OK. 
Now let's quickly have a look at the interface of our software. To the left, we have all of our drawing operations. We have a tab here for modeling, a tab here for clip art. And now with your software, if you choose to purchase it, you get a library of free 3D clip art and 2D clip art that you can use for your projects. And we won't bother to talk too much about layers and sheets, but it is good to know it's there. So we'll go back to our drawing tab for a second. And we're gonna go into our 3D view and right click and go paste. And so the image that we co copied off of uh, the website will now be pasted into our job. And you'll see at the very top of our job, we have a layer that's been called bitmap and another layer that's our initial layer that was set up by default by our software. Now what we need to do in order to tell our, or in order to create the tool paths that we need to cut this project, we need to create some vectors based on this bitmap. And that's really simple to do. We just need to select the bitmap and go over to our bitmap trace tool. That's the little bird over here on the left-hand side of our software. And we're gonna tell what the software, what kind of bitmap we have, which is a color bitmap. And we're gonna go ahead and just in the 2D view, click all the colors that we would like it to trace. So I like the red in the flames, the gray in the, the, the utensils here, the black, and these two blues. And we also, oh, I misclicked the wrong thing, so if I do that, I just need to unclick it again. You'll see that we also get the text. I'm not gonna actually cut this text. We're gonna customize this with our own text. But for now, we're just gonna get it traced. So now we can go ahead and click Preview. And if we're happy with those outlines that we see there, we can go ahead and click Apply and Close. And now we can do over here, up here in our Layers Manager, so we can drop that down and we can turn off the bitmap so we don't see it anymore and you can see the result of the tracing that happened. Now what we can do is go ahead and select that. Now it's been all grouped together for us to make it a bit more convenient, but I wanna remove some of these uh, vectors, especially this text and this funny line down the side here. So let's right click on that, and we're gonna ungroup that back to its original object layers. And then we're just gonna go ahead and deselect all of that, so I'm just clicking in the white space, and I'm gonna delete out by selecting and press delete on my keyboard all the bits that I don't want. I can just go ahead and drag around those and then press delete. And there we have pretty much the basis of our sign or the starting point of our sign. Now let's go ahead and, and add in a bit of text. We're gonna use our text tool. We're simply gonna go ahead and type in some text. So we're gonna call this the back garden grill. And we can choose any font that we have on our installed on our, on our computer. In this case, I'm just going to use Kandera, the one that's here. We're going to make it bold, and we're going to go ahead and click Close. And you see it's created that text over here. I can go ahead and drag it to the center of my job, hold down my Shift key and use one of these control handles, and I can go ahead and drag it to be as big as I want it to be. And I can use my cursor keys on my keyboard to nudge it up into place. So there we have the back garden grill text. Now I kind of like that, but I think I like to have it kind of curve a little bit so I can add some text below it. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of distortion. So I'm gonna click on the distortion tool and we're gonna tell the distortion tool to create a bounding box around our text so we can go ahead and change the shape of this. We're just gonna click apply. And you see right now we have a box around our text but these are straight lines. You can think of those as almost like straight sticks that we can't really bend. I like to turn those spans into something that I can actually curve. So if I right click on this bottom span here, this dot, I can go ahead and convert that to a bezier. And then holding down my shift key, I can go ahead and grab these two end nodes and using my cursor keys just to go ahead and drag those down. And you'll see my text is now bent. Now I have some space down here that I can go ahead and add in some other text. So let's go back over to our text tool again. And I'm gonna type in friends, family, and fun. And we'll go ahead and we'll bold that up and we'll close that down. And again, we're just gonna move that to the center of our job. And that looks pretty good. So now we have all the vectors now that we need to go ahead and create the tooling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to our tool pass tab. And you'll see that now over on our right hand side, we've got um, our tool pass tab opened up. 
with all of our different strategies here. Now what we're going to go ahead and use is this V-bit that we talked about earlier to go ahead and cut out this design. So as long as we have closed vectors, we can do that. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our material. In this case now, I'm going to go ahead and tell the software where my starting point is going to be. I'm going to put that down the bottom left. I also could adjust the thickness of my material, but that's accurate from before. But you should always double check your material thickness. I'm going to go ahead and zero off the top of my material. And this stuff at the bottom here, your rapid Z gaps and home and start position are very specific to your CNC machine. So make sure those are safe and appropriate for your CNC. And we can just click OK. Now we're going to create our V-Carve toolpath. So to do that, I'm going to select all of these vectors and I'm going to go ahead and choose that strategy. So now what I want to do is just tell the software what I'd like it to do with that strategy. So first of all, I'm going to tell it the start depth. So I'm going to tell it to start at the top of my material and then I'm going to tell it to create a flat bottom. You can imagine because of the shape of a V-bit, it's at a triangle, that if I dig down uh, or if I cut down into an area that's quite wide, I might actually cut right through my material. So in this case, I want to add in a flat depth of about five millimeters. I can go ahead and select my tool. And when you set up your software, you automatically get a predefined set of uh, tools that we have set up for you ahead of time, which are uh, which you still should also double check your feeds and speeds on to make sure they're safe and appropriate for your machine. But these are a good place to start. And I can go ahead and check select whatever tool I want to from this tool database. But what I want to do is just choose the V-bit at 60 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. And we can just go ahead and select calculate. I can preview that visible toolpath and I can see what it's going to look like when it cuts into my material. Now this is an accurate toolpath preview. So if your machine is set up properly and you've got the, the appropriate tool in there, then your end result should look just like this. So if this doesn't look right, then you should make the changes you need to get it looking right before you send it off to your machine. In my case, that looks perfect. But to make it a little bit better, I'm going to go ahead and simulate it to look like what it will look like in the finished product, which is the area that I just cut out should be black. So I'm going to color that black. And that's going to look like that in the end. And I can just go ahead and close that down. Now let's go ahead and save off that toolpath using the proper post processor for the machine that we're actually going to cut this on. And then we'll walk over to the CNC machine and we'll cut it. So I got my V-Carve toolpath saved off on my USB drive. I have my controller software up and running. Now your controller software is going to look different than this, but this is what comes with this particular CNC. Our CNC is all turned on. All I need to do now is to clamp down our material using these wooden clamps. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in our V-bit. This is the tool that we're going to cut this toolpath with. And then I'm going to tell the CNC machine where the start position is on this piece of material. And then literally all we need to do is load in the toolpath and say go, and we should cut that first toolpath. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, that looks really good. I'm quite happy with that. That paint, it cut right through the paint, exposing that nice black MDF in there. It looks really great. The only thing I think I would like to add to this is a nice profile cut around the outside of it or a nice border that would give the sign more of a custom look opposed to just being in this rectangle of material. So let's go over to our software and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so now we're going to create a profile cut to cut this out with. And what we're going to need for that is a vector border. So let's go back to our drawing tab for a moment. 
Okay, and we're gonna go ahead back to our 2D view. And we already have all those vectors selected, but if I didn't have those selected, I can just go ahead and marquee select all those if I'd like to. And I can go from the bottom right over to here. And there we have all those selected. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna create an offset vector. And this will create a border vector around the outside of that. So let's just go ahead and do that outwards about two millimeters. Okay, actually let's just go ahead and undo that control Z and we're gonna make that more like three millimeters. And we'll go offset outwards, that's a little bit better. Okay, and what I wanna do is I'm gonna close that down and holding down my shift key, I wanna select the vector that I want to keep out of that group. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep this outline one. And you see that all the other vectors are selected still. I can press the delete on my keyboard and there we have it, it's gone now. Now all I need to do is to create that profile tool pass. Let's go back over to our tool pass tab again. Let's close down our save tool pass dialog. Select that vector and we're gonna go ahead and choose a profile tool path strategy. We'll select that. So it's gonna ask us for a start depth. So we're gonna say zero at the top of our material. We're gonna go down all the way through our material. And one thing that's great about our software is that we can use variables or we can do math in any of the fields that we want to or any fields that accept numbers. So in this case, the variable I'm gonna use is Z because I'm gonna pretend that I forget that I don't remember how thick this is. And I can just press equals on my keyboard and you'll see the software will bring up the thickness of my material. Now I wanna go down just a little bit deeper than that. So I'm sure that I'm actually gonna cut all the way through my material. So I'm gonna add a 0.1 to the end of that. Now we're gonna go ahead and select my tool for my profile cut. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the quarter inch end mill that's already selected there. Now if I wanna take a look at my settings, I can just select edit here and I can see my settings for that. And these all look safe and appropriate for my machine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select okay. We're gonna cut outside that line. We're not gonna do a separate last pass. And we're gonna go ahead and use tabs. Because our material is being held down by those wooden clamps, then we're gonna to need to hold in our sign into our material so it doesn't fly out in the end. So we can use tabs for that. Uh, length 10 millimeters, thickness of two, two millimeters, I think it's gonna be perfectly fine. And we can edit our tabs. And I can just click on this vector where I'd like those tabs to be. And I'm gonna choose nice flat areas so that tabs are really easy to remove in the end. I think that'll be enough tabs right there to hold it in place. So we'll just select close. And I've chosen to use 3D tabs, which you can choose to use 3D tabs or two dimensional tabs if you'd like to. I prefer 3D tabs, um, but it's totally up to you. We're not gonna worry about any of this stuff here and we're just gonna go ahead and rename this cutout and we'll calculate that. And it's gonna tell me that I'm gonna cut through my material and I'm already aware of that. So I can go ahead and click okay. And we can preview that visible tool path and there's the tool path that we're gonna cut. And you can see there are those tabs holding in, our holding our sign into our material block. Now I'm just gonna go ahead now and save that off and bring it back over to the CNC machine and cut this tool path. Wow, that looks really good. It came out really quite nice. I'm really happy with it. And the contrast with the white on top of the black MDF really looks sharp. The details are really good. And that didn't take long to design or cut, did it in the end? So let me just take this off the machine and then we can talk about it in a second. So that looks really good. I'm really happy with that. I got a little edge close to the edge of my board, but that's okay. There's still enough to hold it in. The tabs did their job. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna cut it out of the board. I'll do a little sanding on the edge and then it'll be done. And that was really, really fast. Well, there you have it. I'm really happy with that. What an easy project to make in our software. I simply download a bitmap offline, a quick bitmap trace, created some really, really simple tool paths. And within a few minutes, I had this beautiful sign all ready to give to a friend.
If you did go ahead and download our trial software and follow along with my tutorial, I hope that you understood everything. If not, there's a ton of resources on Vectric.com that you can go ahead now and look at and follow along with as well. There's a couple of great things about our free trial. First of all, it never expires, so you can use it forever if you would like to. Um, we have a full library of trial compatible products or projects that you can go ahead and download and save off the tooling without even owning our software and run it on a CNC. And one other thing I want to point out is that if you do go ahead and use our trial software to create any custom projects, something you might, you might want to create in the future, you can go ahead and save those. You won't be able to save out your tooling, but if you do go ahead and purchase our software and install it on that same PC as the trial version's on, magically your tool paths will be unlocked and you can save those off. Anyway, that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed that. And until next time, have fun, be safe, and happy making.